Hello friends. It's another beautiful day here where I am. Hope it's beautiful where you are. So I'm out for a walk and wanted to share something that's been on my mind for some time, which is a metaphor of practice. Uh, I suppose you could say meditation practice or contemplative practice, whatever you want to call it. Uh, something I have done a fair bit of so far in this lifetime. Uh, and the frames that came to me for this, uh, they got me going, but they're not very appealing anymore. <laughs> Uh, and at a certain point, I realized that I just want practice, whether it's meditation or really anything in my life. I want it to be fun above all else. It's got to be fun. I basically try not to do things nowadays if they're not fun. Uh, sometimes you have to. I don't know. Recently filed my taxes. have yet to find a way to really genuinely have fun filing my taxes or other bureaucratic things that I need to do tend to be uh, noted exceptions where I don't have fun. But in general, I do the things that are fun uh, and avoid things that aren't. And I wanted my meditation practice, contemplative practice, whatever you want to call it, to be held to that standard. And the frames that people describe meditation or contemplative practice in don't sound very fun to me, at least. I don't know how they sound to you, but um, it always sounds like, like this uh, routine hygiene task or something. Like, oh, you should brush your teeth every day or floss every day or, you know, do things like that, which, you know, that's good. Uh, but... I at least don't find those things to be intrinsically meaningful or fun. They're just sort of necessary. Um, and that's, that's how a lot of the approaches sound to meditation. It's like, here's this thing that will, if you do it for 15, 20, 30, 60 minutes a day, go on a retreat once a year, like that'll clean you out <laughs> and take care of your issues. You'll be a little more relaxed, a little happier. Uh, just, it's, it's this kind of means-ends approach of meditation is a means to some other end. Maybe you want to sleep better, maybe you want to be more connected to other people, maybe you want to do better at work, maybe you want to be more relaxed, maybe you want to be less sad. That's all well and good and different meditation practices, different contemplative practices can definitely help you with that, but that's not an approach that really engenders the sense of fun and play. And of course, with um, anything with play, it's tricky because you have to find your own relationship to it, where um, you find your own way to have fun. You know, what's fun for you is going to be different than what's fun for me. And also, you can't really tell yourself or someone else to have fun. That's not fun. Uh, being ordered or dictated to have fun isn't, isn't fun. Um, you have to find your way into it. You have to play. You have to explore. And there's kind of a meta skill to learning to have fun. Uh, discovering what's fun for you, learning how to find that flavor for yourself in a variety of different activities. But I can share uh, one frame that I've found that kind of describes in very broad strokes what my practice is like these days, uh, and one that's been helpful for putting the variety of different techniques that I do into context for myself which is to compare this whole gestalt and, you know, the words meditation and contemplative practice really aren't doing it for me because it's really just life. But this sort of approach of intentionally relating to your life day to day, hour to hour, moment to moment, your perception, your experience, whatever you want to call that, the frame that really resonates for me to describe my practice at this point is uh, juggling. Now I don't juggle. I don't know how to juggle. Uh, maybe one day I'll learn. I don't know. But that's not the point. Uh, you get the idea. It's that there's, you know, different balls that you have in the air and you're trying to balance them. You're trying to juggle each of them so that they stay in the air 
and keep them going and you know from what I infer not from direct experience you know you start to start with one or two balls keeping that in the air and then you add three and four and maybe you can get up to five or six or even more or more complicated objects or what have you um, you you gradually increase the number and difficulty of things that you are keeping in the air that you're juggling without dropping them and you gain your skill that way and so rather than thinking of practice as oh there's this one technique that I'm just going to do all day long which is a frame I've used in the past I actually have for example followed the breath all day up to a certain standard anyway which is you know anyway um, you start to see there's degrees to which you can accomplish that and I sort of set a certain standard and up to that standard I followed the breath all day before uh, that used to be how I approached to practice if the technique is follow the breath and I'm going to try to do it all day long and really like a monastic container or a retreat is a really good setting for that where you're just keeping it very simple there's just one technique you're trying to do it all day long uh, and that's that's rewarding that was that was helpful for me it helped me build concentration and focus sort of internal intention and effort that's all well and good but again it's it's not necessarily fun to actually accomplish that you have to learn to have fun within the constraints of the one technique that you're doing whether it's following the breath or doing body scans or loving kindness or what have you i wouldn't dissuade someone from doing that but this metaphor of juggling feels much more uh apt for the kind of way i'm relating to my own experience now which is there's there's a handful of different kinds of qualities that i've learned to cultivate through a variety of different techniques like for example expanded awareness through alexander technique and michael ashcroft's course and working with peter peter nobes uh that's been really helpful to me the expanded awareness stuff or you know um just body awareness in particular like being aware of my body and what's happening there or loving kindness cultivating love in my heart or different you know positive feelings in my heart um, the Brahma Viharas gratitude etc uh, that's all available to me and, and there's many of these different kinds of qualities or techniques that I can use to cultivate certain aspects of experience and then while I could just focus on one and try to do that all day long or for a specific period of time I'm actually much more interested in combining them and seeing uh, can I keep those qualities going can I balance them all and what's it like to bring more and more of these different qualities these techniques these approaches into my experience and what happens if I do that can I keep my awareness expanded and have love in my heart and track what thoughts are in my mind and feel my emotional body and know what's happening for me emotionally for example there's other things I could be doing but can I keep all those going and, and typically if I try to do that then I'll, I'll lose one and then I have to drop a ball as it were and go down a notch and you know okay let's just go back to the expanded awareness and the meta and the awareness of thoughts for example I dropped one or two of the balls there um, and then once I've got that can I add the other ones in and this also this approach also is really well suited to uh just daily life you know walking around as I'm doing right now or driving or being in a meeting or something like that it's less of this um try to make the whole world like the meditation cushion kind of implicit approach that you get if you're just trying to do one technique all day long which which again is fine in on a retreat or in a monastic container but in this beautiful vibrant alive interactive social world that I'm living in it's much more well suited to try to balance different qualities and bring them into play and um, see what that's like to keep those going so uh, this metaphor of juggling has been really helpful to me for practice and wanted to share it in case it's useful to you <laughs>